Hi, folks. This is Mitch from Hard Intentions YouTube. We also have uh, HardIntentions.com where we sell T-shirts, artwork, and beanies and hats and all that kind of stuff. A few stickers. <clears throat> so we really appreciate your uh, patronage watching our channel here. And we really appreciate you going to our website, which is HardIntentions.com and checking out our stuff. And for all you guys that have bought shirts and merch from us, we appreciate it greatly. Uh, it's just been fantastic <clears throat> so since i've been on this channel i've had a lot of people ask me about mike thompson mike thompson's out of prison now and the questions keep coming do you know mike thompson you know mike thompson you know mike thompson mike thompson's a great guy mike thompson's this mike thompson's that i don't know mike thompson i was in prison when mike thompson was in prison i know all about mike thompson i've seen him here and there um so we're going to do a little video about Mr. Mike Thompson. A lot of people think he's a fantastic guy. <clears throat> uh, most of my friends and I, um, he did a video with some guys and uh, they don't ask him about all the innocent people. He don't ask him about all the people he testified against. Uh, they don't ask him about cooperating with federal authorities, being transferred uh, to different facilities with other informants like against people that I won't say their names, but, uh, you know, my, this guy testified against people and he ratted on people. Well, he didn't even know the story. It's all hearsay. They would put him on a tier. They would pump him full of information and he would testify against them. But anyway, let's get into this. Uh, Mike Thompson said he was, and I do not like using prison gang names and gangs. I just don't do it. But he said, oh, and that's not true. Uh, Harpo and Jerry dropped out long before him. Um, they were uh, high-ranking members of the prison gang in San Quentin. They were also uh, home. They, they dropped out. Uh, you know, the secret was going to get out, and they quit, I guess. I don't know. They went to Tehachapi. <clears throat> they opened Tehachapi. They called Superblock. Uh, Tehachapi Superblock was a building separate from the prison with just Harpo and Jerry. They used to put hoods on their heads and fly them out in helicopters. That's how serious it was. Um, they told on a lot of stuff. Uh, Harpo's family had been busted for cattle rustling. He was a, a gangster. His dad was a cattle rustler. So they were the first two high-ranking guys, higher than Mike Thompson. Mike Thompson was like the second wave of high-ranking guys to quit. Well, Mike Thompson makes it sound like he's a big-time uh, martial arts expert and is one dude. Uh, Mike Thompson uh, said he ran as a native. That's not true, that he was a native. He was not a native. He's not a native. Um, so a friend of mine rode the bus with Mike Thompson from Chino to Tracy. And a matter of fact, that was, uh, oh shit. February, 1976. Yeah. February, 1976. He rode the bus from Chino to Tracy. I talked to this guy on the phone earlier. He said, yeah, he need to do a video. Someone needs to expose this asshole. You know, he's a legend in his own mind. Um, February, 1976. He went to Tracy. That's when he hit the main line, the California prison system. Uh, he got locked up. You know, in 1977, he went to Folsom and got locked up in the shoe, and he never got out of the shoe. So he was on the main line for about a year. That's it. The rest of his time, he did in the shoe units. He dropped out in 1983, so he didn't even make it 10 years as a reg. We used to call mainline dudes, we're called regs. If you're a stand-up dude, white dude in prison, you're called a reg, a regular reg. So he was a reg for less than 10 years. He was only on the main line for about a year. He got to Tracy. He worked as a Jewish chaplain clerk in a Jewish chapel. Um, they called him, his nickname was The Nose. They called Mike Thompson The Nose. Um, you know, and no one that I've talked to, uh, remembers him claiming that he was native or that he was raised native or that uh any of that that's all bullshit he's not a fucking native natives in prison 
uh, Native American Indians, they're stand-up dudes. Uh, uh, very few Native Americans in prison are, are, are garbage, like Mike. Um, Mike did not run Native. He didn't. He was not Native. He's woke. He's wo June 6, 1977. Y'all heard the video I did about the baseball bats in Tracy Prison. Um, that was June 6, 1977. So the nose got to Tracy in 1976, February, right? Uh, he tells a story about seven members of a northern prison gang and up on him with knives and they were going to get him. And, you know, he beat them all down. He dispatched them or whatever the fuck, whatever type of term he uses. Uh, that's BS. You all seen... Um, he has friends that work there as prison guards as well. And, and they told him, hey, look, and I'll tell you, if seven members of anywhere, a single guy, you'd be warm dirt. You'd take a dirt nap, buddy. That's bullshit. Um, he said there was a Lieutenant Johnson that gave him the baseball bats. I read a make. But once again, former prison guard at DVI called some old school guys from DVI prison guard. And they said they would never a Lieutenant Johnson at Tracy, DVI prison. <laughs> there was no Lieutenant Johnson there. They gave him a cart full of baseball bats and said somebody needs, you know, about time. That's a fucking, pardon my language, but that's a that's a fantasy of his, you know. Um, that's an embellishment. So June 6, 1977 is when the baseball bat incident happened. And hopefully I'll have some photographs of the baseball team. But uh, what happened was, uh, you know, they told the white dudes they wanted a third of the money off a gambling table. And they told them they wanted an answer by the end of night yard that night. And so these white dudes had a baseball team and they were out there playing baseball. And there's a canvas bag with the wheels on the bottom. You push the equipment out of the baseball equipment around on and so at the end of night yard, you know, they were all standing around uh, the baseball bats and uh, these ball bats and knives. And um, I'm sure if there's any of them left around, they would have to give their just due respect to the guys uh, for standing up for themselves. Mike Thompson makes it sound like he's a baseball bat aficionado all by himself. He was on the baseball team and I'm sure he participated, but it was not just him. There were 11 guys on that baseball team and all of them had baseball bats and there were other white dudes that had knives and bats that participated it was not did not do that on his own as he insinuates and he all on him to take him down trust me he would have been dead uh uh they were not to be taken lightly they were very serious about what they were doing um that was their prison that was their territory and uh they were very militant um even to this day, they don't tolerate weakness within their own ranks. So um, if seven guys would have got dispatched by Mr. Thompson, uh, they would have been, it didn't happen. It's a lie. Um, I know there's a lot of people out there that think he's a fantastic guy. Um, he's not, he's a scumbag, a, a lot of white dudes. Uh, so anyway, uh, after the baseball bat incident, he says he, uh, four guys sell, he jumped over the tier and came up behind two of them and dispatched him and then went in the cell and dispatched the other. Whatever dispatched mean, I don't know what the hell that means. Basically, he's saying he dealt with them. That's a lie. That never happened. Um, I know guys that were there and it did not happen. Nose, uh, nose behind. Um, they used to give classes on how to do it. They used to study that shit. And uh, he said, look, there's no doubt that one time he was a pretty tough guy and a savage and he would get with it. But um, <clears throat> it's not the story he tells. Uh, another thing I want to tell you is I know Mike's crime partner. His name is also Mike. And I won't say his last name, but I know him. I did time with him in two different prisons. And uh, Mike always tried to send guys that he was in prison for. And he wasn't in prison because some guys were threatening to kidnap two little girls and they got dealt with. They went and ripped some dudes off for their weed. 
It was a weed burn. A substantial amount of weed was ripped off from these guys. Mike wanted the guy so old lady after they ripped the dude off for the weed. Now, whether or not the guy so old lady was involved in the weed burn, I don't know. But that chick ended up becoming Mike Thompson's old lady. How long they stayed together, whether, whether this is his current wife or not, I don't know. But that's the story of his crime. It wasn't two little girls that were going to be kidnapped. You watch his little interview. He, he, he can barely... You know, the story makes no sense. And the way he tells it all slow and methodical, um, I can tell you about my case. No problem. I'll tell you every detail about it if you wanted to hear it. You know, uh, I've spoken about it. I don't have to speak slow and methodical and calculate my answers. The guy's a lot. Took the guy's old lady and all that stuff. He's in prison. Uh, he wasn't Tracy. Um Someone told me that him and another guy got busted for that's what he got sent to Folsom prison for. And that was in 1977. So he was on the main line for less than a year. He got put in the hole and he was never on the main line again. He spent the remaining time, six years of his big, never came back to main line. I know guys who went to animal control in San Quentin and came back and told me he ratted on him. And this is long before he dropped out. So he was ratting before he dropped out. He's not some big stand-up cowboy native. You know, that's that's just a, a bullshit story he calculated or concocted in his own mind. Um, the dude's a fraud and he's a legend in his own mind. Um, yeah, he is a former sh shell of his former self, whatever. He is a shell of his former self. Yeah, he was a big dude. Buffed up, yoked, all that kind of respect for guys that join an organization, run it to the hilt. And when things get rough, and I've said this before, they have an exit strategy. And, and when he was uh, running around doing what he was doing, there were groups within the groups that didn't like each other. They plotted or whether some guy did something they felt was wrong. They get, hey, man, he was in Folsom when... Uh, you know, guy was hitting dope and told that happened. They butchered the guy. Mike Thompson, you know, he didn't drop out because he was upset that some, some guy, some dropouts family was, uh, was, uh, you know, a target on the street. That's what he says. He says that he dropped out because they were targeting, uh, dropouts families on the street. That's bullshit. No one goes from the top to the, you know, out the side as a rat um, for something like that. He went out the side as a rat because he probably caught one figure that he was going to be taken out the box. So he decided to drop out while the getting was good. Um, and here's the deal. A bunch of guys dropped out after him. They're not as famous as him. They probably didn't get it, So he dropped out first. Um, you know... The things he says are bullshit. Uh, what about my homeboy? You know, him and some other dropout. Uh, Mike makes it sound like he's some big white, uh, oh, excuse me, native warrior who was going at it face to face. I don't even think Yogi was on the yard with the whites in Folsom, in the hole, in the shoe. He wasn't on the main line. He was in the shoe. They didn't put him on the same yard. They were just as tough as he was in some cases. I mean, them guys were not punks. They're not, you're not just going to run around the yard and stab 16 of them in, in one day. That's a lie. That never happened. Um, yeah, the white dude. I don't know. It's disgusting what the guy's doing. Um, and what's really disgusting is you having guys like him get out of prison when really they should be helping the average Joe get out of prison. You know what? I don't have a problem like, uh, you know, if you have an issue with somebody and and it, and it goes there and still uh, fear and terror in people so they can extort them, basically, and have their way. Um, guys like Mike are scumbags. Uh, here's the deal, man. Guys in the prison gang all got locked, uh, locked up in 1986. I'm sure 
Mike saw it, the writing on the wall. I talked to another guy who quit and stayed on the main line. He said, man, they told us they were going to lock us all up. So Mike knew what was coming. They were going to give all them dudes indeterminate shoe terms. Uh, hey, look, don't sign up for the ride, dude, if you can't handle the fucking storm. That's my philosophy. I have much more respect for guys in prison gangs who got locked up when they locked them all up. And they rode the fucking beef out. Now they're all back out on the main lines, right? They stuck it out. And uh, <clears throat> no matter what you think about prison gangs, <clears throat> excuse me, them guys signed up for the ride and they're still riding. So you have to respect that. I don't have any respect for some guy that signs up for the ride and halfway through decides, hey, you know, this could cost me my life. This could lead me to an early grave. This could lead me to never getting out of prison. This could lead me to never getting out of a shoe unit. And his exit strategy is to raise his hand, contact the FBI, the SSU, Sacramento authorities, and uh, and get on out of prison. He said when he dropped out, he just told the guy, hey, I want to use the phone. And he went and called Sacramento. Let me tell you something. When you're in a shoe, you don't just say, I want to use the phone. You got to say, hey, I'm ready to drop out. I'm going to snitch. I'm going to tell you everything I know. And then you can get out of your cell and do whatever. And you don't just call Sacramento and ask for Captain so-and-so at headquarters. It doesn't work like that. And I don't give a fuck who you are. You know, uh, <laughs> any of you guys that believe his story are idiots, straight up. And you have no idea who he is. You have no idea what prison was really like back then. And, uh, yeah, you know, took a vow of nonviolence or something like that, right? What about all the damage you did, bud? Motherfuckers hated you then, and they hate you now even worse. You know, I hated Mike back then, and he didn't even know who I was. I seen him around, but uh, I didn't like him. None of my friends like him either. Guys that were in Tracy with him back in the day don't like him. Uh you know, I could go on and on and on. Uh, bottom line, he is, he is, look, when guys like him flip, they have credibility. They're expert witnesses now for the government, for the FBI, the SSU, which is a state agency that works with uh, gang members in prison and all that kind of stuff and on the street. Um, when they become expert witnesses, uh, like I said, they used to take them guys and put them all in the same tier and feed them information and then have them go testify against people. That guy's testified against more people probably than any other dropout. That dude's no good. That guy's a piece of shit. And I'm going to tell you what, man, I, I really sincerely hope that the people that helped him get out of prison, uh, you know, you have no idea uh, what you're working with. The guy's stories are bullshit. Um, you know, his native, imaginary native back. Dude, I know natives in prison, man, that were so good. Some of the best guys you ever want to meet. And it would just turn their stomach to hear that guy say that he was native. You know, everything he says is a fucking lie. So, yeah, he's a legend in his own mind. So, you know, I hate seeing him get the notoriety and people saying that he's an honorable guy and all because that guy has no honor man uh he's a scumbag of the worst kind you know here's the deal um guys like me and all these other lifers getting out uh we earned our way out of prison i got a friend that just got out from sacramento uh you know we weren't super close but we were you know we used to chat uh, you know, he was a gangster, man. Gangsters about making money. This guy got caught with a duffel bag in, in Solano full of cell phones and tobacco, you know, making money. And he went from that to programming and improving his behavior and improving himself as a human being. And now he's out. Um, I went to the long term offender program. I got myself out of prison. You know, I got a friend in motorcycle club that got out before me. He's living in Arizona now. Uh, that dude had to program. 
and and he's one of the most solid dudes I ever met in my life, man. And that guy went through programs, and and he told me hey, he learned a lot of stuff from them programs. He made himself a better human being. He's out. Uh, but this dude, man, this dude ratted his way out of prison. So what do you learn? I know another guy dropped out of prison. He dropped out and ratted his way out of prison. He did like four or five violations for heroin use. You know, this guy ratted his way out of prison. So what did he learn? He didn't earn his way out of prison. He ratted his way out of prison. And that's a slap in the face to every single person who had to program their way out of prison. It's a straight slap in our face, you know? And, uh, yeah, all you guys that are supporting this dude and, and uh, help get up, get him out of prison, and you think he's a wonderful human being, you're idiots, man. And that's that's all I got to say. Thank you very much for watching. Remember, if you sign up for the ride, ride it out. Otherwise, you're just another scumbag like this dude. Do it hard, folks. Always. <laughs> I love you, folks.